Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of the newborn screening program in our country. And together, let's zoom in on what makes newborn screening a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. To ensure that newborns are truly healthy, they must undergo newborn screening, a public health program that helps determine if a baby is born with one of the more than 20 congenital disorders that can be picked up at birth. Its importance cannot be overemphasized. If any of the congenital disorders is left undetected and not managed immediately, it can lead to mental retardation and even death. It was integrated into the public health delivery system with the enactment of the Republic Act of 9288 or Newborn Screening Act of 2004. Now part of the PhilHealth's newborn care package, newborn screening is being offered in more than 7,000 hospitals and birthing centers nationwide. It has also saved thousands of babies. Now, children and adults. This educational series is intended for health professionals who deliver services of the newborn screening program. Whether you're online or offline, this program aims to further enrich your knowledge in newborn screening and be able to apply the highest quality service to Filipinos, especially during challenging times. We will discuss the very process of newborn screening from the, from the moment the baby is born and into the continuing care available for newborns found positive. We will also zero in on the features and, manage, and management in each of the conditions included in the newborn screening panel. We will also interview patients and their parents. And in keeping up, to the challenges, talk over how facilities and centers manage to give quality service despite the limits brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This program is the newest educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators, one in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. We also hope that this series will also benefit the health professionals, physicians, nurses, midwives, nutritionists, med techs, as well as the students in the health professions. So take a seat, get comfortable, as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. I'm Dr. April Grace Burboso. I'm a pediatrician with a subspecialty in clinical genetics, and um, I'm currently the newborn screening coordinator of Dr. Jose Fabella Memorial Hospital. So, ang Dr. Jose Fabella Memorial Hospital ay naglilingkod sa mga uh, nanay na nanganganak, ano, catering sa, uh, usually sa Manila, Greater Manila area. So we have about 400 bed capacity. We have 30 newborns a day, roughly. No? Um, during the uh, height of the pandemic, we had um, additional areas which include the areas for the suspect, for the COVID suspects, and uh, areas for the COVID positive mothers, for the COVID positive baby. So um, uh, many areas were added. No? We had a number of trained staff during that time to do newborn screening sample. And at the time, because there was increase in the number of areas that had to be uh, serviced, there were times that we had, we lacked no, the trained employees on the newborn screening collection. So at that time, um, there were some delays in the 
um, newborn screening sample collection and uh, at, time, at that time also there was an increase in the uh, unsatisfactory and contaminated sample. So what we did was uh, as the newborn screening coordinator, I talked to the staff, to the nursing staff, to the midwifery, to the newborn screening staff and um, we looked at the problem and we saw that um, there were lack of um, trained newborn screening midwives and nurses at that time because of the increased areas. That's why um, we requested for um, skills training from the Newborn Screening Center NIH and from the Department of Health Newborn Screening Unit. Now we have um, more trained um, newborn screening staff at Jose Fabella Memorial Hospital. Uh, during the time of the pandemic, um, uh, we learned that, of course, the mothers will continue to give birth and babies will continue to come. And uh, our newborn screening services couldn't stop. No? Also, we cannot compromise the quality of our uh, newborn screening um, procedures and our collection methods. And um, we learned that um, by um, coordination, talking to the staff and asking for help from the different stakeholders such as the Newborn Screening Center NIH, the Newborn Screening Reference Center, will be able to overcome that problem and we got the answers naman and the response from the different units. So newborn screening, alam naman natin, um, ang goal niya is to save the lives of babies so timely newborn screening in order to save the lives and also to maintain quality of lives for the babies. So we should, you shouldn't be complacent whether it's pandemic or not. We should do our best to do a, a timely and efficient collection of the newborn screening samples. So we'll be able to screen the babies uh, correctly and um, save them on time. For this episode, we will talk about newborn screening in the time of COVID-19 pandemic. The local transmission of the coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 in the Philippines resulted in rate adjustments in the healthcare arena, including the newborn screening program operations where timing is very critical. With the total lockdown, temporary closures, and modified schedules of the official courier partners, the transport of newborn screening samples to the newborn screening centers were halted. In this episode, we have invited two special guests to share with us the challenges they have experienced and how they address this to facilitate continuous quality newborn screening. Here with me to discuss this topic is our nurse from the Newborn Screening Northern Luzon, Anthony James Almazan, Program Manager of NS, NSC NL. And we also have Ms. Sheila Meg Gilaran, Program Manager of the Newborn Screening Center in Mindanao. Welcome to Newborn Screening in Focus, Sheila and AJ. Let's start our conversation. Let's start with how long have you been with the program? Sheila? Ah, hello, ma'am. Magandang araw po to all the, to you, Chancellor Padilla, and to all the viewers of TVUP series. Okay, I started newborn screening uh, in newborn screening center Mindanao in 2009. So, magta 10 years na po ako sa programa. And uh, I've been through many challenges na rin sa, sa, dito sa uh, Davao po. So, uh, 10 years. 10 years, years ma'am. Actually, I don't have any body here. So, talagang adventure talaga pagdating sa Davao. Pero I'm not really new sa newborn screening. I have I've been exposed to the newborn screening program before pa, in 2009 in uh, UPI Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. What about you, AJ? How long have you been with the program? Hello, Doc. Good afternoon. And to all the viewers po. Um, though I've been with the prog I've been with the program since NSCNL started in 2017, so I'm four years in service now, po. Okay, so ang tanong ko sa inyo ngayon eh, um, what is different 
in terms of um, your responsibilities. Maybe you can say a little about what is your overall responsibility in the center and then how, how was it before COVID and now under COVID. I'll start with AJ. Okay. Um, Doc, I am the program manager of NSCNL and our responsibility is to uh, check on the proper implementation of the program in our jurisdiction, which is Regions 1 and 2. So with that, but we are responsible for uh, monitoring, evaluating the program. And with the diff as to the difference for um, pre-COVID and this COVID experience, um, sabi ko, actually, sabi ko ng first week doc ng, ng ECQ, parang it's been a month. So parang ang hirap ng COVID experience. Dahil una, wala kaming sample na nare-receive. Sobrang hirap mag-receive ng sample uh, from the NSF. And also, we have to think of the um, operation of the NSF also. So, twi dalawa, po yung ano, dalawa po yung iniisip namin. The NSF and also the NSC operation. Okay, so dalawa yung pinoproblema nyo. No? Just for our viewers... Ang tinatawag ni AJ na newborns na NSF, these are newborn screening facilities. These are the hospitals and the birthing centers collecting the sample. At uh, uh, yung kanyang pinanggit naman na newborn screening center, this is actually the laboratory. And your laboratory is based where? Where is the center based, AJ? Um, Doc, we are located po here sa Mariano Marcos, dito po sa Batak City, Ilocos Norte po. And how many hospitals and how many facilities are you servicing? Total? Um, we are we are servicing more than 700 hospitals po in regions 1 and 2. Okay, so thank you. What about uh, kay Sheila? Uh, Ma'am, when I started in 2009, actually, um, I covered ko po lahat ng administrative, administrative aspect of the program from the accounting to the procurement to the human resource uh, development, even to the program development. So, medyo malarok talaga ang aming part. So, meron kaming program man, uh, laboratory manager who handled the laboratory part. But as I said, medyo malawak talaga yung administrative part. Uh, challenging na noon, nang wala pang COVID, pero naging medyo doble challenging nung nag-COVID na. Kasi mahirap na sa career, walang career. Meron pa kaming i-handle na human resource na hindi mo dapat sila May mga working arrangement na ini-implement ang uh, civil service to prevent COVID infection among the workforce. Tapos meron pa rin kaming mga um, laboratory procurement issues nung time yun kasi wala nga career to transmit the sample as well as we cannot procure the, the supplies and bring in the supplies in the wow. So, wala kasing airline, no predictions airline. So, medyo mahirap talaga. Fortunately, sa awan ng Diyos, hindi naman nag-close down ang, ano, ang center. Um, meron din mga positive cases nung time na yun, nung during kasagsagan ng mga COVID. Pero so far, hindi po nag-close down ang center. Thank you, Sheila. So, just for the benefit of our viewers, I just want to share with you that um, the structure of the newborn screening program is such that um, the 7,200 health facilities are actually divided in terms of uh, uh, location and as to where they will, they will submit the samples. So as you've heard from AJ, uh, NSCNL, NSC Northern Luzon, received samples from the hospital birthing centers of Region 1 and Region 2. As for Sheila, uh, who belongs to the NSC Mindanao, yes, they covered the whole of Mindanao. And actually, uh, they, they have about 1,800 facilities. Sheila, is it Yes, ma'am. I think yes, 1,300, if I'm right not mistaken. Now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I, um, this is something probably that most of our viewers are not familiar in terms of operations, but you can see that the operation of every newborn screening center is really very complex. And now with the COVID, it even you know became more difficult. And, um, and that, that's going to be part of our discussion now on how we were able to adopt uh, the program. Now, um, so let me just talk about the staff first. No, I Before we go to the challenges for the program, uh, naman yung staff nyo, AJ and Sheila, you know, when COVID struck a year ago, because it's been a year now, 
Um, how would you describe the feeling, the spirit inside the newborn screening center? Let's start with AJ. Uh, yes, po. Um, at first, po, um, very anxious lahat ng staff dahil takot silang uh, ma-infect ng COVID. And um, um, what is good po is no one got positive po ng COVID-19 from our uh, unit. And we remain operational all throughout the crisis. And as of now, po, um, staff are physically, socially, and mentally healthy as they strictly follow yung ating health protocols inside and outside of our um, hospital or work premises. Po. Uh, what about in Mindanao, Sheila? Um, yung sinabi ni AJ, uh, ma'am, uh, yeah. uh, nandun din yung, yung first few months of the COVID pandemic. Meron, nandun yung fear, nandun yung uncertainty, yung anxiety, and yung worry din. For the, other than the staff, kasi ang, pro, ang staff namin nag-awarding kung paano, yung program operations map, paano, ang, paano ipadala yung samples, paano ipadala yung matanggap yung samples sa amin. So aside from the health ng staff namin, meron program concerns din po ma'am. So we deal with it every day as, as the days passed by nung COVID pa nag, at naghahanap kami ng solution, nakakuha kami ng solution, Nag, na nandoon na yung confidence and kumpiyansa and uh, na-address na rin yung fear ng staff, uncertainty, uh, nandoon na rin yung hospital who has provided us so much with the safety measures. Also, uh, management, and si Mindanao mismo, ang um, administrative, nag-provide ng mga safety measures. So, medyo nabawasan na ma'am sa ngayon yung fear and anxiety. Pag-uusapan natin isa-isa yan, uh, yes, uh, Sheila. No? So, um, so, narinig nyo, no? pareho si AJ at saka si Sheila, sinabi nila na meron talagang mga agam-agam nung sila, nagsimula ang programa. At sabi nga ni AJ, nung una nga daw, walang sample dahil walang courier. Kailangan natin maintindihan ang proseso para makarating ang sample sa laboratory ay to uh, the courier. And nung nag-lockdown, it became an issue. But um, I'd like to share with the audience that uh, if, you, if you remember from episode 1, I explained in that uh, lecture that the coverage of um, newborn screening in the Philippines actually only dipped by 12%. No? So parang sinasabi ko dito na bago nag-COVID, ang coverage ng newborn screening sa buong Pilipinas ay nasa 92%. Nung after, COVID, after COVID, after one year of COVID, we went down only by 12%. And really, that is really a... Um, that's amazing. Nakakatuwa talaga na hindi tayo masyadong bumaba and, uh, at nangyari yan dahil sa lahat ng ating newborn screening center ay gumawa ng paraan para mapagsilbihan ang ating mga ang mga ospital at birthing center. Diyan na ating magsisimula ang ating episode ngayon. Pag-usapan natin kumusta ang operations ngayon under COVID-19. So, um, AJ, maybe you can share, you know, maybe what were the most challenging um, cases that you had in either Region 1 or Region 2 and what sort of strategies did you uh, consider and, um, and and you know, give us the journey for these very specific challenges. AJ? Yes, no. um, I remember the meeting namin with NSRC no March 17, 2020 that um, um, parang may advice na if in case that uh, NSCs will not receive samples, we might uh, close temporarily. So with that fear, po, parang nag-isip kami ng strategy how to facilitate uh, yung, ating, ano, yung ating receiving of samples from this NSF. So we experienced the um, one time ang nareceive lang namin na sample is sampu lang. So with that number of samples, parang say, ang inisip namin, sayang yung reagent, but still, we have to test them. So sa amin sa program, um, with that um, issue, ang inisip po namin, um, yung pong, uh, mga partners na pwede po namin itap, like the uh, Philippine National Police, who are uh, having their duties at the provincial border, sila po yung aming kinausap para i-allow yung mga uh, newborn screening facilities nearby to send samples sa amin directly. And also for the uh, province of um Ilocos Norte, we talked to all the hospitals na magkaroon ng drop of points um, among the area para yung mga malalayo na hospitals will just drop to the uh, hospital near uh, our area and then 
ipipick up po siya ng aming mga staff doon. So from there, um, doon po kami nakahugot ng mga idea na mas i-implement pa yung aming um, advocacy and also yung strategy namin na newborn screening by any hand strategy. So, so AJ, and, ang, sabi mo yes. you have drop of points. No? So how many drop of points did you have in Region 1 and then in Region 2? Um, I think though, um, for Region 1, we have identified six for Pangasinan and I think um, five for La Union and also five because the geographical, uh, geographical area kasi ng Ilocos is pahaba po. So doon din yung isang challenge sa amin, especially that um, Ilocos implemented one of the most strictest um, community quarantine sa Luzon. So, ayun, kailangan talaga namin mag-set ng drop of point among this area. And for Region 2, I think we have, uh, I think, 16 po din na facilities na uh, from different provinces po, including those uh, that are considered po na DOH hospitals din po. Okay, so parang sinabi nyo, no, whereas before, pinipick up sa bawat hospital, this time, yung, yung hospital mismo ang nagdadala ng sample sa drop of point. And uh, with yes. that, we were able to survive. Yes, po. Okay. So, sa, sa Mindanao, Sheila, how did you handle? Kasi laki ng Mindanao, no? And you yes. have thousands yes. of health facilities. Uh, how did you, Aura, how did you manage? What we did during the first few months is to address muna yung samples within the city. So, inuna na yung namin, na, namin yung samples within the city. We call, we have several big hospitals. So, at least yun lang naman ma-address namin. So continue yung operations ng mga newborn screening dito sa malaking hospital like SPMC, our own, madali lang. So bina, bina transport or bin, dinadala lang nila from the newborn screening uh, collection ng hospital para sa amin. So there are malaking samples na siya, mga 36 pa at that time uh, per day. So nung na-address na namin within the city, we asked the hospitals or the or it has uh, facilities inside the city to bring the samples to us. Fortunately then, merong isa o dalawang careers na operation, operational pa at that time that they work within the city lang. So yung na-address namin yung uh, facilities within the city, so okay na siya. So we accept samples within the city. Then we go outside the city. So pag nag-outside na kami, like Pigeon uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, Karaga, and arm. So, nauna actually, nag-ask nag kami assistance from DOH regional offices. So, nag-response sa Region 10, Region 11, Region 12. Kasi they can transport the samples via land. So, madali lang po nito, ma'am. So, they use their own transportation. First, what uh, they did was uh, call Katulad ni AJ, may drop of hospitals then or points sa kanilang provinces. So nag-set uh, nag sila ng mga hospitals where, they, where the facilities can drop off their samples to these provincial hospitals. The DOH will schedule pickup of these samples from drop of points. Then the regional offices, the NBS team from these regional offices bring the samples to us. So kung Region 10 ka, agayang de Oro ang office ng regional office. So they travel. First, they pick up the samples around the, the Cagayan de Oro provinces. Then they will travel this to us, sa Davao. Gano din gin, ginawa sa Caraga from the Butuan. Inikot nila yung nearby uh, facilities sa Butuan. Travel din nila sa Davao. The most challenging, uh, dun's arrangement na yun, was Sambuanga. Kasi they have to fly. We have to fly in the samples. Kung land trip kasi ma, medyo matagal siya. So... What we did, we tapped the Philippine Air Force to bring in the samples. Ang um, medyo difficult na doon kasi hindi araw-araw yung schedule ng pag-fly uh, ng kanilang aircraft. So meron talagang schedule. Minsan, uh, umaabot tayong isa sa isang linggo. Minsan, isang beses sa dalawang linggo. But we really try to bring the samples uh, sa Davao. So yung regional office ng Sampuanga Peninsula, nagtatap din sila ng mga drop of points sa Simbuanga Peninsula para ang um, Sambuanga City i-endorse yung samples sa Philippine Air Force tapos si Philippine Air Force is applied in dito sa Davao 
ng mga sample. So, yun yung in-address namin, ma'am, outside the city. So, from every week, ma'am, may delivery kami from the regional offices. Yung arm, ma'am, yung medyo ang pinaka-active nung time na yun is ang may pakpak. So, they give the samples to Cagayan de Oro to si uh, regional office, region 10, si HD 10. So, si HD 10, pinapadala dito sa amin. Meron din ng mga malalaking hospital, ma'am, like Sultan Kadarat Provincial Hospital, na sila na rin ang nag-gather ng mga samples within the area. Tapos sila na, sila na rin ang nag-transport ng samples sa amin. So, yun ma'am ang arrangement namin before. Thank you. Na, wala pang career. Thank you. Yeah. Th thank you, Sheila. Alam mo, nakakatuwa pakinggan yung story nyo. No? Kasi if I go back to 25 years ago, nung no, nagsisimula pa lang ang programa, ang unang tanong ng mga ospital, eh paano dadalin ang sample sa sa laboratory? And uh, para bang it became part, you know, our responsibility to make sure that they, you know, that we pick up the samples. Kaya nga naging proseso natin yung courier service. But I think, you know, itong COVID-19 pandemic has shown that this is a time when we just have to find ways together. At nakita natin sa dalawang example yung uh, the society getting engaged in, in the solution. No? Uh, identification of rough points, big hospitals, you know, bringing the samples for other hospitals. And that, you know, para bang kailangan gawa ng paraan, hindi pwedeng hihindi. And uh, pwede naman pala talaga kung talagang uh, pagsasama-samahin natin talagang examples. And uh, narinig natin kay Sheila yung, yung challenges. No? Every region has a challenge. And uh, the people will have to work together with the Department of Health and the Newborn Screening Center to come up with the solution. At halo-halo na yung kanilang solution sa pinigay. So narinig natin ang police, narinig natin ang Philippine Air Force, babalik ako ngayon kay, kay AJ Paano nyo hinandle ang Batanes? Ayun, Doc. Sobrang hirap actually ni Batanes, Doc, since nag talagang total lockdown sila for how many months. So what we did po is to uh, contact y yung ating uh, NBS coordinator sa Batanes General Hospital dahil three facilities lang po ang active doon. Uh, Batanes Gen, uh, Itbayat, uh, which is far pa from the main island ng Batanes. So, um, sobrang hirap po talaga. Kaya we have to connect also with the provincial DOH office and the provincial health office of uh, Basco Batanes para lang um, makakuha ng solution. And they gave us the idea na what if we contact natin ang uh, Philippine Navy. So, with that po, um, buti na lang po that time may schedule ang Philippine Navy na pumupunta once a month so with that, um, medyo, medyo, we felt, ano po, we felt overwhelmed kasi parang we will, may support kami na makukuha from Batanes to test the samples from Batanes. And uh, uh, what is good pa doon is with the help ng DOH uh, Region 2, uh, CHD2, si uh, mas na-facilitate namin yung pag-receive ng sample kasi it's either si uh, Philippine Navy, dadaan ng Santa Ana sa Gayan, then um, the, NB, the regional coordinator the answer region 2 will have to go to Santa Ana Cagayan and then to um, isasend niya yung samples through LBC then yun, yun yung isang way then the other way naman is si Philippine Navy will uh, may, may, may uh, port sila sa La Union and then um, from, La Union, from Batanes to La Union si CHD1 naman ang pipick up sa, uh, sa port point or sa uh, point sa San Fernando La Union and then um, the NBS coordinator sa Region 1 will be the one to send it through LBC or yung ating official career partner po. Then uh, with that ano po, with that arrangement doon po namin na-facilitate yung um, yung sending ng sample from Batanes. It takes time pero um, nakakatuwa pag pagka-receive namin ng sample dito sa NSCNL Kapag nakita namin na yung envelope is from Batanes, sobrang tuwang-tuwa po kami dahil we'll have a chance to save the babies from these disorders. So, ano po, very uh, nakaka-happy na nakaka, nakakapagod siya pero it's, ano po, it's worth it naman po. 
Thank you, AJ. Narinig nyo na, mulang batanes hanggang sa buhangga. You know, in the New Barns Screening Program, sabi ko nga ay, we are in 7,200 health facilities. And uh, with COVID-19, we just had to go back to the drawing table and find out paano ba natin prarapingin ang sample mula sa birthing center papunta sa laboratory. Yan pa lang ang pinag-uusapan natin. Ang, unang, ang susunod natin tanong, kasi pinag-usapan na natin yung sample mura sa labot sa ospital, pupunta sa laboratory. Magpunta naman tayo ngayon sa results. Meron ba kayong binago sa estilo nyo ng pagsabit ng results? Kasi ang narinig nyo na eh, both in Northern Luzon and in Mindanao and in all of the laboratories, irara nila ang samples. No question about that. So, meron bang nabago sa pag-release ng results? Let's start with Sheila. Uh, Siyempre mo, walang kurir eh. So, Ginawa namin, baliktaran kami ng DOH Regional Offices. Pag may nag-transport sila dito ng samples, ibibigay din namin nila namin yung results sa kanila. So kung sino doon ang pwede nilang ma-distribute na results, uh, una pala din lock off nila sa mga drop-off points. So kung sinong malalapit na NSF doon sa drop-off point, pwede nila kunin yung results doon, ma'am. Ma'am, kasama na, kasama na po dito yung MBS kits kasi may mga orders pa nung time na yun eh. So, So, binibigay namin sa DOH, regional offices, sa, uh, kung kailan sila pumunta dito, i-exchange namin din. Binibigay din namin ang results. Normal results to mga, and yung, ano, yung NBS kits sa mga procurement. So, baliktaran kami ma. Kung ano ang dumating sa amin, ibablik namin sa kanila. Tapos sila rin uh, nag-distribute doon sa kanila. Jurisdictions or provinces. What about in Northern Luzon, AJ? How was it? Northern Yes, po. In Northern Luzon naman po, um, since may isang four year na talagang uh, very, ano po, very workable with the full regions ng uh, one, Ilocos and Cagayan, um, what we did po is uh, to provide the tracking numbers sa mga newborn screening facilities. And if may mga hindi dumating po sa kanila, we advise them to call immediately yung aming result officer. And then kung talagang hindi po makakarating sa NSF yung uh, result. Uh, ang ginawa po namin, kinoordinate po namin siya sa provincial DOH office um, through our through the DMOs that are assigned doon sa provincial DOH office. Sila na po ang nagbibigay doon sa mga areas of ano po nila, responsibility po nila. Thank you, AJ. You know, I'm so happy to hear always the Department of Health being part of the picture because that is exactly the purpose of being part, being part of the public health program. Ito ay programa ng DOH. DOH is the lead agency in the implementation of the program. At nakikita nyo naman dito kung paano napaka-supportive ng ating mga regional offices para maparati ang sample at madala naman ang result. Yung kaninang binabanggit ni Sheila na ito yung normal results kasi lahat ng resulta binabalik namin talaga sa ospital. So sinasabi nga niya, pag nagdala ng sample lang ang, ang, ang DOH ng mga from the hospitals, bigay naman ang result. So ang tanong ko sa inyo ngayon, what about the patients with a positive screen? Paano naman ang naging nahirapan pa kayo sa pag, you know, pag-refer ng pasyente because of the COVID-19? I'll start with Sheila. May nagbago ba sa process of referral? Nung umpisa man sa ano, nung first few months of the pandemic, Ma- mahirap talaga ma talagang i-recall your patients lalo na pag if the results need confirmatory testing so what we did was um, una ginamit namin yung lahat ng nasa disposal namin like phone calls o kailangan namin siya tawagan through mobile kung may positive po ang result una po tat- natawagan talaga namin yung hospitals kung ang result kailangan uh, significantly elevated at kailangan ng mga confirmatory testing We also call the patient, the mothers. So, kung further management ma- pa, we, we do teleconsult or even video conferencing with the parents. And also, we involve the hospitals and the health professionals to manage the patients. So, yun pang una talaga namin ginagawa, uh, initial recall of the patients with positive results. Ngayon, ma'am, dun sa mga hindi namin makontak, kung geographically uh, challenge ang kanilang area, what we did again, DOH regional offices, parang very active talaga sila ma'am nung time ng pandemic. So we refer these patients na hindi namin makontact through phone call sa kanila 
Tapos they do the local tracing. Ititrace nila yung mga patients sa addresses ng mga patients. So, in-endorse din nila ito, ma'am, sa mga tinatawag nila na uh, let me check, ma'am, ha? Nurse Deployment uh, Project or NDP nurses na naka, naka uh, sa mga local barangays health offices. So, ni-utilize nila itong mga nurses, mga midwives, local health barangays official, op, uh, officials or mga na, na, midwives na nagtatrabaho locally sa kanila. So, sila ang nagtatrack ng patients para lang ma-recall and ma-refer sa amin for, for uh, management. So, also ma'am, uh, doon sa management ng mga patients, for CH, let me just mention ma'am, for CH confirmatory test, we ask the local and urban hospitals na kung pwede ma-accommodate ng nila yung patients kung very basic lang yung mga tests for CH. Uh, for CH, congenital uh, hyperthyroidism. Sa CH naman ma'am, ito po yung kailangan talaga ng mga CH confirmatory testing. So, what we did was, since ang So, Mindanao, isa lang ang confirmatory testing dito. So, uh, pinapadala sa amin. Kung ang DOH, merong scheduled, scheduled delivery sa amin, uh, nire-request na namin na na kung pwede kunan ng NSF yung uh, patient na kailangan ng confirmatory testing. Yung DOH, magpapidadali nila ito sa amin. Tapos kami na magpapadala dito sa Davao for testing, for CH confirmatory testing. Ngayon, ma'am, for those naman na mga uh, disorders na kailangan talaga na uh, confirmatory testing, like hemoglobinopathy and metabolic disorders, uh, may hold talaga namin to ma'am because we don't have uh, careers at that time to send the samples, yung biological specimen, to Manila. So wala talaga magmatagat na career kasi urgent din to, tapos next day delivery. So hinold talaga namin ma'am. Meron kami talagang backlog of patients na kailangan talaga i-recall for specimen. Pero still, we urgently recall these cases. Tapos, ina-assess lang po nila immediate assessment by their attending practitioners. So, ina-assess po talaga ng mga practitioners. We still inform these patients that confirmatory tests will be done when travel restrictions access or at least allowed. So, sinasabihan pa rin namin yung pasyente, ma'am, sa ngayon hindi ko namin kayo makukuha na ng specimen for confirmatory testing. Pero later on po, balikan ho kayo namin para kunin yung mga specimen na to. For uh, metabolic disorders naman, ma'am, cases were managed based on clinic clinical assessment by our metabolic specialist. Hence, metabolic management was initiated immediately even without performing the biochemical metabolic workup. So for hemoglobinopathy cases, immediate referral to a pediatric hematologist were advised. So that even if confirm confirmatory testing was not done, these babies would be assessed and managed appropriately by the specialist. So yun pong kinagawa namin, ma'am, habang yeah. hindi po namin siya nagkakapag-confirmatory testing. So I, I think, you know, recalling the patient for now this time for confirmation and for the referral is as complex as bringing the sample to the center. What about in your case, AJ? Um, how did you handle the recall of the patients as well as the management? Ah, uh, yes po. Um, sa amin doc, same with Ma'am Sheila. Um, yun lang, yung recall of patient, um, naging double yung effort for doing that kasi takot yung mother na pumunta dun sa hospital. So we have, first we have to, ano pa, we have to counsel them by that, the importance of the, having the repeat sample, having the confirmatory or being referred to a specialist, we have to uh, we have to counsel pa for the mother or kailangan pa namin pagsabihan yung mga parents para lang mag-comply sila sa recall. And um, also, yung ano po, um, the same din po dun sa ginawa nila Ma'am Sheila for the confirmatory, um, especially kung yung patient is galing ng Ilocos Norte, ang ginawa po namin, we asked for the assistance ng aming host, ang Mariano Marcos, to transport this uh, samples to the confirmatory testing center in Manila para um, timely and para maging, I mean, para okay yung quality ng sample pagdating sa Manila. Kasi ang difficult doon is um, pwedeng masira yung sample kasi may mga times na pag pinadala through courier, late nang dadating ng Manila. So, The, the, the facility will have to collect again the sample. So kaya 
yun po, nag-request kami ng transport assistance for uh, for the patient. And uh, ang isa pa po is, uh, syempre with the, with the aid of the DOH pa din po na um, we requested for, ano po, for ambulance conduction to reach those patients na mahirap or malayo, especially those located in geographically isolated areas. Thank, thank you, AJ. You know, I, I think, you know, with, with your sharing, both you and Sheila, it was very clear that the COVID pandemic really affected the operations of the newborn screening program. But you've shown that, you know, it is possible. And you've actually tapped so many resources uh, to make sure that you're able to, you know, to perform your, to fulfill your vision and your mission for the program. So um, we've tackled actually, you know, morale and how it's affecting the staff. And we've discussed, you know, how samples help to reach the, how to reach the, the laboratory. We've also discussed uh, how to recall the patients and release the results. Uh, what are other things that you would consider as uh, additional challenges? Because uh, I think we're here for another year. Tama ba ako, no? Mukhang hindi naman to mag end siguro kaagad, no? So do you, do you see... Uh, additional measures that are needed to ensure that we will be able to cope for another set of months in running this program. L let me start with AJ. AJ? Um, doc, uh, if we all remember no November and December, Region 2 suffered also yung massive flooding. So that's an additional challenge po sa amin noon. So madami po kaming late samples na nakuha from the province of Isabela and Cagayan. And syempre, hindi na namin sila finors na um, mag-send agad-agad ng sample dahil hindi talaga possible. So what we did po is to really come up with a regional contingency plan in order to, uh, in order to facilitate the sending of samples and new operation din ng ating newborn screening uh, sa, sa region namin, sa 1 and 2 po. So... Um, Yung aming regional contingency plan was drafted together with our partners, remember, with the DOH, CHDs. We also have our continuity clinic and also yung ating mga G6PD confirmatory testing center. So yun po yung sa tingin ko is makakatulong sa amin to cope up with this challenge. Actually, last kahapon po, kahapon we had a meeting with uh, our follow-up team. We were planning to conduct sana. Uh, I mean, the follow-up, long-term and short-term follow-up po. So we are trying to ano po, we are trying to collaborate na um, para ma soften yung ano po, para ma soften yung yung operation ng follow up sa region dahil uh, bumaba po yung aming return rate. So with that um, kailangan talaga ng uh, collaborative effort with uh, from the different partners to address these issues and sa amin sa center hindi talaga namin kakayanin kung kami lang po. Okay, thank you. Thank you, AJ. Um, the realization that you cannot solve the problem alone is already a first step. And uh, the development of a regional plan with the other stakeholders is actually a really planning for the future. And as you said, you know, you just did not have the COVID pandemic, you had the floods, and you know, the Philippines will always have disasters, uh, even after the resolution of COVID 19 pandemic. What about in Mindanao? Uh, do you foresee any other challenges, uh, Sheila? Um, uh, with regards to the uh, physical health or health, uh, mental and health uh, status of our staff, the vaccination program of the government really helps na mapanatag ang kalooban ng mga staff namin in terms of uh, risk exposure sa hospital, tapos yung fear nga na mag, uh, they get infected even outside at their homes and other uh uh, offices or outside uh, their personal activities just na ma, normal activities na outside the office. So yun, yung welfare ng aming staff, okay na yun ma. So with the full support of the hospital, pag nakakas nagkakasakit po kami uh, with, in terms of COVID, kung may symptoms like uh, ano nang kami naramdaman ng mga sakit, andun yung full support. May meron kami uh, PHS, a personal health services na teleconsult na very very responsive sila pag meron kami mga ganong cases na 
konting kubulang, konting mag uh, kating ng lalamunan, pwede ka agad makakonsult sa kanila via FB Messenger. So you don't have to go there physically. So meron silang medium to assist us. So yun yung sa health na aming staff ma'am. Pangalawa, uh, medyo bumabalik na rin po yung operations ng career. So medyo hindi na ganun kahirap ang aming pagpadala ng samples, mag-receive uh, ng results. Even confirmatory testing, medyo may liwanag na <laughs> sa uh, tunnel mo. Uh, pangatlo, we, the online, the doing task online really helps us to connect with other offices uh, and other uh, partners outside uh, Davao. So we use that to our most minimize namin ang online facility so nagko online meeting kami nagko consultative online yung DOH nagka-conduct ng mga uh, activities online so at least meron din connection hindi nawawala yung aming ano uh, connectivity ba ng totoo sen kasi due to the travel restrictions tapos merong isolation ng mga uh, places in, in Davao so nandun ma'am, so we, hindi naman masyado kami affected emotionally, physically kay medyo bumabalik na sa bagong normal. Hindi na ganun siya ka, kahirap gawin yung mga tasks namin. So yun ma'am, ang um, napapansin yes. namin ngayon. Okay, Pagka, Sheila. Yeah. Okay, parang remind lang tayo ni Sheila, no? Even where, you know, we're succeeding in the operations of our program, the mental health component must be still a priority so that, you know, the the trust of our staff, you know, in in uh, the program uh, will not diminish, you know, and the trust of the hospitals and uh, all our birthing centers will will be there. Um just before we go to the final words, I'll be asking AJ and uh, Sheila to give the final words. I, I do want to express my my thanks to the uh, Department of Health. You know, nakakataba ng loob, no? Itong pinag-uusapan natin ngayon na each time meron silang banggiting strategy, sinasabi nila na kasama namin ang Department of Health. Uh, I want to thank you and I'm sure that it's happening in all of the regions. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. At sa isang episode, kayo naman ang aming interviewin para malamang kung how was it to run a program, you know, in the middle of the pandemic. So let's let's go to some final words. No, and dami nating natutunan na dito ngayon. And uh, thank you, thank you to AJ and Sheila. But I, I'm sure you know uh, AJ and Sheila will have some final words. We'll start with Sheila, maybe addressing our the other uh, newborn screening coordinators, the screeners, and then uh, all the rest of the viewers. But remember that uh, all the coordinators are listening to you. Ano bang mensahe mo sa kanila, Sheila? Uh, take home message ko lang, ma'am, actually. Uh, be resourceful and always stop others. Uh, seek the help of your co-partners or stakeholders in the program. Kasi based on our experience, the experiences lang namin, Meron talagang tutulong at tutulong sa iyo. Hindi ka nag-iisa sa ganitong uh, end before or journey mo sa pagbigay ng quality newborn screening sa inyong client or sa mga parents. So general public, maghingi ka lang ng tulong. Meron po tutulong at tutulong sa inyo. Yun po ma'am. And always uh, be safe and practice the safety measures even not only in your workplace but also in your personal life and personal activities. That's the best way to stay safe in the COVID pandemic uh, now. Ma. So be safe and always practice safety measures. Yan lang po ma. Maraming salamat, Sheila. What about you, AJ? Final words? Yes. No. Um, last year, though, I made, uh, I requested my staff to write something sa isang paper. Two things that they miss and two, I, I mean, one thing that they have learned from this situation. So, and most of them, um, nag-answer na ang isang uh, ang isa talagang lesson na, na na kita nila with this kind of situation is yung closeness nila with the family, the bonding, also the bonding, yun po yung mga na-miss nila. And one year after, I made them write again uh, one thing they have learned and mukhang the same po, the same po yung talk nila. And with that, um, para ang lesson naman na, ang, ang final word ko for this, ano po, for this program is uh, the NBS program you mean resilient. Um, parang mas naging innovative pa nga ang mga tao ng newborn screening. And um, with this experience, uh, during this unprecedented uh, global crisis, uh, 
parang we still provided a lesson of hope and uh, commitment to the program. So with this po, uh, we are one for the newborn screening program po. Thank you, AJ. Uh, maraming salamat sa ating dalawang bisita, AJ and Sheila. Uh, totoo no, na ang COVID-19 pandemic ay naging isang malaking hamon sa ating healthcare system sa buong mundo. At uh, dahil sa ang uh, ating public health priority ay nag-shift sa response sa pandemic, sa ibang pagkakataon ay nakakaligtaan ang ibang, norm- ang ibang programa. Pero sa araw na ito, sa ating episode, ay napakita na ang ating public health program ng newborn screening ay hindi na tinag dahil sa ang mga nagpapatakbo ng ating mga newborn screening center ay nag-isip ng mga paraan para matuloy ang ating programa. At sabi nga nila, be resourceful, be hopeful, be innovative at kung sama-sama natin sasagutin itong mga programa, itong mga problemang ito, itong mga hamon na naririnig natin ay kakayanin natin talagang mapatakbong ibang programa sa loob ng COVID-19 pandemic. Muli, maraming salamat kay AJ at kay Sheila. Kaya dapat Managing the newborn screening operations at different levels was and continues to be a tough task. We heard from our guests how the newborn screening program leaders quickly stepped up to respond and coordinate mitigation plans effectively. Throughout the pandemic, newborn screening centers, regional screening teams at the Department of Health Centers for Health Development, newborn screening continuity clinics, and newborn screening facilities in the country remained operational, facilitative, and employed various creative strategies while observing standard protocols in continuously giving quality newborn screening services. With the COVID-19 pandemic, challenging healthcare systems all over the world, public health priorities shifted towards response to the pandemic. The newborn screening program has also felt the effects of the situation and had to adapt to continue its cause. Through the innovative strategies, solidarity and resilience of the different stakeholders of the, of the program, delivery of service and care for patients has continued in these trying times. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or you may tweet us at newbornph or also include the hashtag, hashtag ENBSPH. Before we end, I want to again take this opportunity to present to you the new addition to our tools and learning, our ENBS mobile app. The ENBS mobile app is a one-stop hub for all newborn screening health workers on everything they need to know about newborn screening. It, is, it also features a, re- a rewards program that our health workers can use to earn points and use it to claim shop vouchers with our partners. If you have already downloaded the app, answer the quiz that we will send to your inbox to earn those points. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary by the emerging challenges through an open dialogue that our experiences in uh, in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this program, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach, empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with the newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. For our next episode, we will start to focus on the different conditions included in the ENBS panel, starting off with congenital hypothyroidism. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. You
the process na magpa MBS. Ilang patak ng dugo ang kailangan para magawa ang best. Makalipas ang 24 oras pag si baby lumabas. Gawin natin ng NBS ang lead sunod sa batas. Oh, I'm a baby. Sous-titrage